Picks and Bets show on the Mayo Media Network. I am Matt Moody, joined by DJ Mitchell to cover some action-packed uh, Tuesday night in the NHL. Uh, DJ, how are you doing? And uh, how was your Monday night? How was your weekend? Uh, well, the, the weekend could have gone better. Uh, as I mentioned, I am a Cleveland Browns fan. We're not here to talk about football, so I'm not going to get into it. I mean, I definitely am a little bit upset. If you'd like to reach out to me and give, give your condolences to the 2020-2021 Cleveland Browns, I'm more than willing to take that uh, tough break. Uh, congratulations to you, though, Matt. Buffalo Bills moving on. I'm definitely joining the Mafia for the remainder of the season, so congratulations to that. And then uh, Monday, the Sabres won their first game of the year, and I'm, I'm feeling good. So, Matt, how about you? How was the weekend? Yeah, the uh, the first – I mean, it was great. The, the first uh, Bills playoff – victories of basically my my memorable lifetime has been a lot of fun um and then the sabers winning even more surprising i think just the sabers winning a game it feels like it's been forever since they've done that so um it was really uh really uh, i want to say fun day around the nhl because there were games from noon until i mean it's going to go till 1 a.m so it was a fun you know martin luther king day uh, but the noon game was kind of a snoozer and oh my God, the five o'clock game was absolutely just awful. <laughs> was the, so the bad. Isles and Bruins. I mean, I would pay money to not have to watch those two teams play each other. So, um, yeah, you know, I guess we'll put that one away for a, a future date, but man, uh, Monday night, it seems like there's a lot of fun games going on. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's definitely, uh, <laughs> a theme of this Tuesday night of action is that, a lot of these games were already played on Sunday or Monday. So we're getting into a lot of back-to-backs here. Yeah, no, I, I definitely think it's going to change the way you attack each slate. Um, I'm going to really try not to let a one game sample size ever dictate how I'm going to bet, but definitely going to bring in, you know, the adjustments and changes and see if we can capitalize on them. Um, not ride a guy that was a smash play one night just because he scored a goal. Um, but I do think we get some some interesting, you know, lines in this game. Uh, why don't we just want to get right into it with the Devils Rangers, or did we have a winner to announce? Uh, yes, we did. So, uh, you know, we've been asking you guys to uh, rate the show, review the show, comment on YouTube, do all these, you know, do all these great things. And uh, I'm happy to announce that we have our second winner of the $100 uh, Apple review giveaway, and that is at Eagle Kniegel. I'm guessing it's Eagle and then K-N Eagle. So Eagle can Eagle kind of, you know, evil can evil. Um, so I'm guessing it's that, uh, you know, definitely big congrats to him and big thank you to him and everyone else who's rated the show. Um, so yeah, there's one more coming at the end of this week. So, you know, make sure you subscribe and rate five stars and review. Um, I believe the first one was announced on the Monday show with Chris and Eric, uh, which, by the way, that's a really fun listen. They talk about some fantasy, uh, fantasy hockey or seasonal fantasy angles. So it has a bit more staying power than I think something, you know, more focused on DFS might. Um, So, you know, if you haven't listened to that show, definitely, you know, tune back into the Monday show and uh, give that one a listen. But uh yeah, DJ, any, uh, anything else that you wanted to cover before we start going game by game here? I think we should just get right into it. We'll start right off with the Devils at the Rangers. First time of the year with this matchup. Obviously, the Hughes, Kako, and or Lafreniere rivalry that I hope to see a lot of in the future when these two teams get to that point of uh, prowess. And in this matchup, I think we have a lot of interesting stats. Both teams coming into their third game. The most interesting stat, maybe in the NHL, is that the New York New Jersey Devils have not allowed a five-on-five goal against. I expect that to probably change in this game or in the near future, but a crazy, only two games, obviously, but they lost a game. And in two games, they have not allowed a five-on-five. Uh, was it three? Oh, yeah, it's just two. That's right. Yeah, right. I mean, it's, it's you know, Mackenzie Blackwood playing unbelievable. Uh, the Rangers, first game, Shesterkin, a little shaky. Uh, you know, Georgiev comes in. He got a shutout, correct? Um, and he will get the nod <laughs> again against the Devils. So it's going to be a game with a, a six over under right now. I think people might come in on that, on that under, uh, I still kind of don't think either of these teams have the best defense and I'm okay with go, taking the over. I think it's going to be a little bit, uh, you know, teams are people are going to kind of take these crazy stats and see, you know, Georgie, have coming up a really nice game. And I think people are going to jam that under, but I kind of like the over here, Matt, what, what are your initial thoughts on this game? Yeah. I mean, um, so early on, the Devils have done a fairly decent job of sort of deading the pace. Um, so it's not like they're, you know, they're extremely low goals against 
as in zero is too unheard of. Um, but I just don't see that lasting for too long yeah. um, against a team like the Rangers, who certainly will, you know, uh, dial up the tempo if necessary. Uh, I, I think that, yeah, I think this is one of the more interesting games to target too, um, because we're getting the Rangers sort of, I mean, minus 160 on them is, I mean, that that's a legit number, you know, like we've got the Flyers versus the Sabres coming up and, you know, that's obviously we'll talk about that game from Monday night that we already saw, but that's the exact same odds basically uh, that the Flyers have. And so, you know, they're sort of giving the Rangers credit as like this, I guess, uh, a tier above the Devils. And while I think that might be true in the long run, I'm not sure it's at that point just yet. Um, so, you know, if the Devils can sort of keep up this strong defensive performance they've been putting out there and the Rangers still have to sort of shake off some early season uh, rust or some kinks or whatever. Uh, now, maybe they did that with their thrashing of the Islanders, but I wonder how much of that was just the sort of shock of seeing their goalie go down in warmups and like all that, um, because, you know, Varlamov, two of three games, has a shutout. So, like, maybe they just got shell-shocked, and that was why the Rangers had such an easy time. But, I don't know, I, I kind of like the devil side of this. Um, so, I don't know, any other thoughts on this game before we move on? Yeah, I mean, just a couple player notes quick. Uh, first off, P.K. Subban has seen an unbelievable amount of minutes. So, uh, you know, in maybe a league that isn't that deep, if he's still out there, I know some, I saw in some drafts him go undrafted in season long. Um, he's pretty cheap on DraftKings and FanDuel. Uh, 30 minutes and 26 minutes back to back here. Uh, the Devils are definitely giving their top guys a ton of run. Uh, Jack Hughes saw 23, Palmieri 22. Um, on the Rangers side, the one thing I really want to mention is their power play had changed. So going into this game, we should be seeing a first power play unit with Adam Fox on it. Um, that's going to be different. Panarin, Strom, Mika Zibanejad, and Kreider kind of coming in as, as expected. But Fox taking over that first unit, that definitely raises his potential. Um, he's a little bit priced up for me to like jam him in at 5,200 on DraftKings. Uh, we'll get to more DFS stuff uh, later on in the show. But I did want to mention those two defensemen as kind of like, if you're going to stack, those are clearly the guys to go with. Um, but we'll move on over. I think both of us... Uh, I would say I'm, 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 you know, not incredibly strong leaning on taking a, a strong t- take on either side of this game and betting, but I do kind of like what you're saying about the devils and I, I kind of like the over, uh, but if you want to move over to the next game, Matt. Uh, yeah. I mean, next up we have the Sabres and Flyers, like I alluded to, we already saw this game play out. Uh, the Sabres, I mean, just killed the, the Flyers six to one. Um, and honestly, I mean, it was five, nothing with two minutes left and, you know, the shutout's gone in the final two minutes, but I mean, this was a complete shutdown of the flyers. Um, so this is a really early season sort of, uh, you know, bounce back spot. Um, we saw it happen. Like I just mentioned with the Rangers and the Islanders where, you know, uh, big win one way gets immediately reversed the next night. This sort of seems like that kind of spot to me here too. I mean, the flyers, uh, they shouldn't be this bad without Sean Couturier. Um, it seems like, you know, Morgan Frost had a tough night in trying to replace uh, Couturier. You know, the minutes weren't quite there for him and all that. Um, but, man, like, I don't think the Flyers are a team that really is going to, you know, suffer from just one piece missing. Um, so I think they rebound here. And, you know, I like – I sort of think that, like, if you – if you want to bet this number, I mean, you just got to really consider like the Flyers and the Rangers should not be the same level of favorite against the Sabres and Devils. I mean, honestly, that's just sort of how I see things here. And yeah, you don't bet comparison uh, comparatively speaking, but both of those numbers, I think can't necessarily be true at the same time. <laughs> like it just seems really bizarre that they're so identical right now. Um, so I think I sort of prefer the, uh, Devils and then the Flyers sort of side of that, but and you could make just a, as good an argument for like the Sabers and yeah. Rangers. But I don't know. Uh, what do you think about Monday night's game? And like, is there a chance for the Flyers to bounce back here? Yeah, I'm mean, 100. percent Obviously, it, every game's a new game. Uh, as I think we probably have already mentioned, if we haven't yet, you know, this isn't your normal back to back. When they, you know, a lot of times in the past, it's kind of been like a Sabers at Flyers and Flyers at Sabers. I mean, this is you know a game where it's just going to be go to bed, get up, play again. Um, I'm not too focused on that as as too much, but you know, as the season progresses, I think people are going to be jamming in unders a lot more on back to backs like this. Um, the one interesting note for the Sabres, uh, Olmark was supposed to start and missed due to purposeful family reasons. 
We didn't get any information on that. Obviously, uh, hoping the best for whatever's going on there. So we might get Hutton on a back to back, which I definitely think hurts the Sabres. He's a bit older, you know, not a huge fan of that. Or else we're going to get uh, Jonas Johansson, who uh, was not good last year. So <laughs> I definitely think, you know, right now, if you can get in on the Flyers at this price, I think it's going to change a lot, especially if we get the news that it's going to be Hutton again. Um, so I like this, you know, if you're waking up in the morning and you see the odds still really not very high favoring a Palm Flyers team who, you know, they pulled Hart. He probably is going to start that means tomorrow, in my opinion. It's like they pulled him to get him in tomorrow. I think that's really why this line is so close is because they think it's going to be Elliott and Hutton instead of it being Hart again. So I really like it right now. I think it's going to get a lot worse as soon as we like get closer to the game and we get all these news and notes out. Um, other than that, though, you know, as far as players go, you know, check what they did yesterday. It's going to be the same for the Sabres. There's no way they change it up. Reinhardt uh, ended up playing. It was a game time decision and he ended up getting in scoring two goals. So definitely, if you, like we mentioned before, get in a discord chat, even if it's not with us, just make sure you're getting in on this news because if you would have, you know, got that news, got Reinhardt at you know, way under the field, you're probably feeling real good right now. Um, anything else you want to mention before we move on? I think we're kind of in agreement here though. Yeah, I mean, Philly will probably put their lines in the blender. So that's yeah, really yeah, I, no idea. That's kind of um, it doesn't sound like Shane Goss is fair as an option. Uh, it seems like he's sort of still out on the COVID list or some variant of that. But on the off chance that he does get cleared, I mean, he's the perfect type of player that you could see step into a sizable role in this lineup that, you know, just wouldn't be thought of. But, um, you know, I think we'll have to save that for a few weeks or maybe at least a week or so um, to get Shane Goss' spare. So um, other than Johansson being a legit bargain bin uh, price tag on DraftKings, we, we hardly ever see that 6,500 in net. Um, that's really the only th other thing I wanted to mention. So we can sure. go over to uh, Chicago and Florida. Now the Blackhawks, you know, they, they got smoked uh, once again by Florida. Um, Florida played their first game of the season on Sunday night. So, you know, we, we can take a few things away from Florida's start. Um, the first being that Anthony Duclair and Carter Verhage alongside Barkov was not a fluke. I mean, those two guys each played 17 minutes. Yeah. Um, so that I thought that was really interesting. Um, Florida is actually not as big a favorite as I would have thought either. Um, you know, the money line is sitting at minus 167, uh, depending on where you're looking, obviously. But that seems like pretty light odds for a Florida team that showed that they were ready to play on Sunday. Now, I don't know if you think, you know, if you think any differently from me here, but uh, Florida seems like one of the best sides to target on this slate, uh, not just from a betting perspective, but also from a DFS perspective. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, their price tags are unbelievably low. I mean, if you're getting two guys with Barkov tomorrow in Verhegu at 2,900 and Duclair at 2,700 against the Blackhawks in a six and a half over under that I kind of <laughs> like the over on, um, wow. Uh, I think the, I mean, really though, the most interesting note from their first matchup was Florida did not start the what $8 million goaltender they got, or even more than that. I don't even know what he makes, uh, but Bogrovsky will be in net against the Blackhawks on Tuesday night. So um, that was kind of mind blowing to me though, that uh, they ended up going with um, uh, Drager instead, but yeah, you know, this is you, you, incredibly cheap game uh, for both sides on DraftKings. Um, six and a half over under is tough for me to really want to target heavily. I think, I like, I like it. I definitely like the over under. I think I like the over a bit, but it's hard for me to really, you know, want to tout that as like a favorite bet of the night or anything. Uh, but I definitely am just going to be more focused on the DraftKings perspective on this and maybe a player prop bet instead of trying to go for the over under, just say, you know, how, what odds am I going to get on Duclair, a uh, bonafide sniper to get a bowl in this game and just jam that in. You know, I just think it's, you know, it, it could, with DraftKings having him so cheap, it's got to be a pretty good bet. I'm not sure if you yeah, I mean, don't player props up, but don't overlook the narrative of you know a guy gets you know literal donut on opening night, and I'm sure people will stay away for that exact reason. And um, Duclair played 17 minutes. He played power play two time. Like he did everything you would expect from him. He just didn't get on the score sheet. He didn't even get a shot. Um, so yeah, I mean, you asked me about the goal scoring odds. I can. Just yeah, I, have, I have him up now. Okay. Um, I mean, Verhege is plus 330. And just for to score, do score. 
and Duclair is plus 230. Um, again, getting 17 minutes. What, what was the – I had the power play lines up in last game. Um, hold yeah, on. I mean, the, the power play wasn't that interesting. Either. I mean, it was just for yeah. Hagee. They're both on the second one. Duclair. Um, so I think from a power play perspective, Hornfist is interesting because he is yeah. playing with uh, – Huberto at five on five as well. And then on the Chicago side, it sounds and maybe even looks like uh, Bogfus sort of lost his power play job. Uh, he might even be a healthy scratch in this one. So I think Duncan Keith could get, you know, that decent bit of extra value assigned to him if he takes over that first power play unit. So yeah, it's also going to be interesting to see what they do at center. Um, they had Pius Suter with uh, Patrick Kane and Debrinket. I'm not sure if that's going to stay. They, you know, Suter, it looks like got kind of switched off later in the game anyways. So I don't know if that's going to stay or not. But if it does, I mean, we went over this on the Morning Skate podcast about Pius Suter. I don't know if you want to mention our findings. I mean, it was basically uh, that he dominated the Swiss League last year at like unprecedented levels and is definitely a high rate shooter from the Swiss league. So it's a guy we're definitely tracking. He's not minimum salary. Like he was, he's 3,900 now. If he's not with Patrick Kane, I can't really see it, but is there anything else you want to mention about him? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, not really. It, it's, yeah. you know, he's, he's a, he should be a rate shooter. He hasn't quite shown it yet, but if he's centering Patrick Kane, I mean, yeah, that's, you know, that, that's, that's the spot. That's where you want to be uh, if yeah. you're playing guys on Chicago. So um, we can go over to the next game, though. We have Washington at Pittsburgh. Uh, this game is also a six and a half over under. And, you know, this one uh, on Sunday was also a pretty fun game. I wouldn't say it was necessarily a barn burner. I don't think there were a ton of shots in the game, but there were a decent number of goals. So, um, you know, obviously any game with Ovechkin sort of starts with him. But yeah. there's more, uh, definitely some changes on the Pittsburgh side that could be forthcoming with the, uh, sounds like Kasperi Kapanen is, you know, good to go. Um, so see how that shakes up their top six, if it does at all. And this game is essentially a pick em. You know, Pittsburgh is a minus 125 favorite at home. So uh, these two teams are rated pretty close. Do you have a lean one way or the other, just like, you know, over the long run, which team's going to be better? Um, have you seen anything that you like out of either of these two sides? I, I mean, I like the Capitals. Uh, they've definitely come in and, and it looked great. Uh, the Penguins, I don't like defensively very much. I definitely at this point am going to be targeting them in DFS a lot. I think they'll be able to keep pace with anyone. And the one thing about both teams is you kind of know where the play is going to come from. It's, it's you know, they're going to drive it through Malkin and Crosby and anyone playing with them. Uh, you, you know, got Erod at near minimum salary playing with Crosby. You know, it worked out great. He ended up getting 19 minutes of run, which was awesome. Um, I, again, in, in daily fantasy circles, this game, all the top guys are priced way up in a six and a half over under. So it might be a situation where if you really, really like Pittsburgh or Washington, you might want to get some of those bargain in Florida guys to go with it. Uh, I definitely like the over under, but I'm kind of leaning a little bit towards uh, the capitals. And I, again, I don't like to bet on six and a half. I just don't like to think seven goals personally. It's, it's just something I just sort of like, you know what, I'm just going to stay away from this one and, and look if I feel a little bit better about something else. There's situations where it comes up and Pittsburgh's weak enough defensively where you could definitely see a couple goals from Ovechkin and breaks the game wide open, but I'm probably not going to bet the money line at all as far as uh, over under. Um, that's just kind of, I don't, I don't like taking six and a halves. Yeah. I mean, I think for me, uh, the, the most interesting thing is really the, the, the chalkiest thing. I mean, Ovi is plus 100 to score a goal. Like it's a true 50 50 conundrum, you know, does he score? Does he not score? But what's really interesting, they have guys like Jake Gensel at plus 135, you know, Sid's below plus one, he's plus 148 right now. Like it's not like you're getting that worse of odds to bet on Ovi doing what Ovi does and scoring goals versus the Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, so yeah. that one kind of stands out to me, just like, you know, maybe you're not, you know, betting the house on it, but if you're making a parlay of like, you know, four or five different bets, I think Ovi scoring in this matchup, in this, you know, this, projected environment i think that's one of the you know more uh, more fun bets and definitely i think one that uh you know should come to fruition here so i like 50 50 odds on you know ov scoring a goal yeah um, definitely so that's uh i think that's a good place to leave that game we can head over to winnipeg taking on the senators now this is one of the rare instances this year where we'll get a team on a back-to-back -back in winnipeg playing on the road against a different team you know like mm -hmm. that will rarely happen this year um but typically in the past we see you know uh 
the, the lines sort of get boosted in favor of the rested home team. And I think that is certainly the case here because we are getting the Senators uh, basically at a pick em. And I think that the Senators have, you know, they've looked pretty good opening up against Toronto. Uh, they looked really good in that one. So I think that there's enough, um, you know, enough reason to think that Ottawa can get it done here. But uh, how do you feel about Winnipeg? I mean, did, did you like what you saw against the the Maple Leafs despite them losing 3-1? Uh, yeah, I mean, like a guy like Mark Shifley playing 26 minutes on Monday yeah, night? I, Shifley has been playing a million minutes. That that really is he, – he's got to be right up there with, you know, McDavid and, and the others as far as playing the most minutes. Um, they gave up about a million shots. They definitely <laughs> got pretty beaten up in that category. Uh, I did have some uh, Hellebuck lineups because I was like, if they get the win, he's going to be awesome. And he still was fine, even though. So, yeah, I, I definitely like the pace of this game a lot. And I was really hoping that this game would not be six and a half because I really like the over. Um, I don't, like I said, normally I just I just look elsewhere. But I really like this game being a, a pretty decent pace. The Jets, uh, maybe with or without line A, we don't know right now. So Ellers go up with Shifley and Wheeler. They got a ton of minutes. So, I think again, like this game has a lot of cheap plays in a six and a half. Connor is priced way up. But other than that, you can find a ton of value here. Um, a couple guys to note um, as far as Ottawa, I guess, because I think finding the Winnipeg guys is incredibly easy. I mean, it's Wheeler, it's Ellers, maybe Line A, Connor. You know, it's not going to be too difficult to find the correlations you want there. Uh, Ottawa's kind of been a little bit different though. So the top power play last game, which did have a little bit of a variation to it, was Batherson, Shabbat, Dadanov, Norris, and Brady to Chuck. It kind of looks like Stepan took over for Doris at some points in that game. I'm not sure. I didn't watch the game, so maybe it was just a one-off, but uh, Stepan did get one of the first power play looks. I kind of see that taking over, which definitely hurts Norris's upside a, a good bit. He ended up uh, not getting kind of the premium role he got in the first couple games in, in game three against Toronto. So that kind of raises the bar a little bit on a guy like Stefan, especially if we do get word that he's playing with Brady to Chuck. Um, I do like this game a lot though, as far as a lot of goals, is there anything, I think I talked enough there. Is there anything you wanted to mention or a, maybe a player that you're kind of keying in on? Like, yeah. I mean, that enough 2,600. I don't know if <laughs> I, I can just, I'll pass it to you on that note. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look, like, I mean, we, we saw Dadanoff go off. It's pretty chalky against uh, Toronto at 3,100 the other day. For whatever reason, you know, I, I get he didn't really produce. I mean, you know, three shots on goal over those two games, and that's it. It's not great. But when you're on this for top power play, you know, I think that's a really, uh, you know, a good bet to make um, in terms of just getting that premium role. I think the guy I like a little better than that, though, is Drake Batherson. I mean, we saw last year he can play, um, and he's only 3,200. You mentioned Josh Norris and Brady Kachuk. It sounds like Batherson is solidified as Kachuk's, uh, you know, winger, and it's just a matter of who's the center. So you get a power play one, line one, Drake Batherson for 3,200. I think he uh, is among my top values here. Um, as far as the betting odds are concerned, I think I do like the senator side here. It's tough that it is to sort of uh, – you know, look beyond the fact that they're the Ottawa Senators. Um, <laughs> there's not been too much all that impressive in the Canadian division so far this year. I mean, Toronto has looked like Toronto in stretches, which I think is probably what Toronto does best. They do it in stretches. Um, but otherwise, there hasn't really been a consistent, you know, world beater. So Ottawa really could be on this precipice of, you know, if they can string together points in three to four straight games here, I mean, they could easily be looking at the playoffs. Um, I, I like what I see out of these young guys. Their defense looks surprisingly decent after a couple games. Like, you know, they're not a raging tire fire on the ice. So, um, you know, definite, definite steps of progress here in Ottawa. But um, yeah. I think this one is one of the premier games for sure. Uh, yeah. It should be a lot of fun and definitely tuning in. Uh, yeah. Games that I will not be uh, necessarily <laughs> making time in my calendar to watch. Uh, how do you like that for a, for a segue? Columbus Great at segue. Detroit. Um, you know, we, we saw a little bit of fireworks toward the end. Uh, Marensky and Larkin, uh, famously, you know, University of Michigan buddies, uh, they fought at the end of this game, you know, dropped the gloves, traded punches. Um, you know, little did Larkin know they had actually scored a goal that put them within one with like a full minute to go in the game. Uh, you know, I guess he just felt like punching, you know, punching his buddy in the face. Um, but that was a fun one. So 
you know, this game in terms of the you know betting line doesn't look all that appetizing. Uh, Columbus, very large favorite, minus 177 here with the over under at five and a half. So, uh, DJ, what do you think about this one? Yeah, it's definitely a dud. Um, I think the only good news or silver lining is the drafting prices are really, really low. And a couple guys that I really like, like Aubrey Brookstrand, I think he's a premium, you know, cash game option. Um, you know, getting 17 to 19 minutes, I think he just kind of was right around the 19 minute mark tonight again. Um, so he shoots the puck a ton. He's in a great spot. First power play, everything you could possibly want in a guy at 4,300 against the Detroit Red Wings. I don't know how I could look overlook that price, especially in cash. I think he's going to be decently chalky, especially among the sharps. Um, other than that though, not, I'm not going to go game stack on this game for sure. I'm not going to go crazy. You could talk me into Seth Jones at 40, 900. I also, I, I mean, one of our favorite players is Philip Poronik, who is getting the minutes. I don't believe I, I did not see the game. I, uh, did he get power play one yet? Oh, is he getting, yes, he did. He, he did uh, finally because he he was I, he stepped so, in the previous game. Yeah, so Carolina, he, I believe. he got the promotion mid game. So you know, okay, remains okay. to be seen whether that sticks, but that's a yes. bet I'm willing to make here. Yeah, um, yeah, me too. A lot of our sort of go to yeah we can talk about the fs later but a lot of our go-to yeah. guys have already been sort of you know hiked up in terms of just salary um so seeing him at still at that you know price where he started the year combined with his really solid blocks and shots floor um you know i think that he's certainly an option here and the other thing i like about detroit is you always know where the offense is coming from you know yeah. be it larkin and mantha and bertuzzi um those guys aren't you know not very expensive at all honestly no, so no. um i think they're sneaky uh i also think that you know on a back-to-back -back, this columbus team there's still a lot of trade rumors about pierre luc dubois I even saw an article today like you yeah, know he in got, the midst of them winning like did he get <laughs> uh, benched in the third yeah so he got benched kind of in like the end of yeah, the he, he didn't get the minutes that his line mates got um, and then he showed up and yeah. scored a highlight real goal so like yeah you know, so the, yeah the, the pure Luke Dubois experience, but they're still talking about like how he might be a distraction and yada, yada, yada. So, you know, if you're buying that narrative, uh, yeah. Detroit here at home, certainly not a bad place to look from either a betting angle or the DFS perspective, uh, just given some of the really low prices. Um, but yeah, that, I think that's all I have to say on that. So yeah, no, yeah, overall, not a great game, but I think there's a couple spots that I like, um, but yeah, we can get over to the hurricanes at the predators again, a true back to back, um, I'm again, not high on this game. As far as, you know, you take all the games and look at them. The Nashville side is incredibly cheap over on DraftKings. Um, I don't hate the idea of the over at five and a half either. It's a back to back, but I'm just not going to let that cloud my judgment too much. I'm not going to let it beat me down. And, and, you know, I think that's really going to dictate a lot of these over unders because this isn't a situation where either team's traveling. And I, I just not going to get too crazy thinking that, a team that is going to go home, go to their hotel and get up in the morning and play is a big, big issue. It's a back-to-back. -back. It's early in the year. They haven't played in a long time. I'm not going to let it cloud my judgment. Five and a half. I like that over a lot as one of my favorite bets of the night. Um, and with that, you know, definitely this Carolina side, it, it, the game, it, the prices are cheap on DraftKings. Again, I'm, we'll get, we'll go a little position by position in a minute, but you can get, you know, a lot of premium spot players in this game for super cheap. And I think this game could definitely hit that five and a half. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't quite share the same optimism for this one. So, you know, to me, this sort of uh, screams stay away just from a lot of different angles. Uh, I think two of Carolina's goals in this one that did manage to hit the over were shorthanded. Um, mm -hmm. This one, I think, was 0-0 going late into the second, maybe, if I'm not mistaken. So I think the elements are there for sort of like a sleepy sort of game here. Um I don't necessarily love, you know, either of these teams. And I think that they both prefer to play a defensive type game. Um, I think that Nashville might be a smidge overrated in this betting line because, you know, they're basically a pick them and yeah, they're at home, but Carolina seems like they are, you know, if like, I'm, I can't wait to see Carolina take on this version of the Tampa, uh, you know, Tampa Bay lightning, because they seem like they are really good. Um, like, yeah, they lost a game to Detroit, but the night before, the game before, they put up, like, 45 shots to, like, 16. Like, this team has it when it really wants to just lay it on. And so I think that we could be seeing that, uh, you know, type of game coming from them here. I really like getting the over on Andrei Svechikov's uh, shot projection, or, sorry, shot line. 
So on DraftKings, in the player props, you can bet the over on Andrei Stachnikov, the best shooter on Carolina, over two and a half shots, and you get plus 105 to do that. Like, you get better than 50-50 odds that Svechnikov is going to get three shots on goal. I think that's one of the best lines, um, you know, that I've seen so far this season, just sort of uh, looking through things. And so that sort of has me thinking that Svechnikov is where I want to get my exposure in this one. Uh, what do you think about that? I mean, okay. <laughs> two, two and a half shots. So three shots from Svechnikov, 50-50. Do you take that bet? All day. I take that bet all day. I mean, he's you know, only had two games uh, sample size so far. He only did it once, but I think that, you know, as the season progresses, he is going to be their premium shooter on the power play. Um, I'm interested to see, you know, what they end up doing at their lines. I wasn't really in love with where they had him slotted in, which was kind of the reason that it was kind of tough to play him over on DraftKings with Martin Nuke and Fast, but it does look like they may have potentially looked to switch that up. I mean, we're going to have to wait till tomorrow because normally they do run a morning skate so we can actually see where he's going to be. I'm hoping he ends up finding a spot with Trocek. Uh, I think Trocek could be a lot better of a guy to give him the puck, but yeah. And, and uh, part of the reason I say that Svechikov got a lot of run with Aho tonight too. Um, so, yeah. you know, that, that could even be in play the first line, first power play Svechikov, not just the, you know, second line first power play. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of upside here in Svechikov specifically. Otherwise though, I think I'm looking to fade, uh, you know, fade that game. Last game of the night, we have Colorado uh, heading to L.A. to take on the, the Kings. Now, this one, you know, is Nate McKinnon versus the Kings. That really should be about all we need to know. Uh, last time we saw Colorado, they're out there dropping eight on the, you know, decent uh, projected playoff team in the West, St. Louis Blues. Now we have the L.A. sort of, uh, you know, everyone just pencils them in for the basement. Uh, do we see a letdown spot here from Colorado, or does Nate McKinnon just sort of do Nate McKinnon things and uh, you know, yeah. send them home early? No, I, I definitely like the Colorado side a ton in this matchup. Obviously, the money line is not what you want to see. If you want to bet on Colorado, it's, it's definitely a huge Colorado favorite in this one on the road uh, in L.A., but I think – you know, there's so much value, especially on DraftKings, that McKinnon is going to be a core play for me, for sure. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. And I like the over, and I like Colorado. I, I take it all. I even maybe take a bet of McKinnon scoring a goal in the game. I mean, I think that they're going to smash the Kings. I mean, have the Kings looked okay? Yeah, they, they held their own against the Wild for two games and lost both in overtime. Um, I don't think that they're completely helpless out there, but – just don't really see much of an angle here on how they could uh, hold their own um, against Colorado, who I think once they really get the ball rolling here is going to be just crushing these teams in the West. Um, yeah, I like no, that, that the Colorado stack is probably my favorite of the night. I don't think that's going to be uh, unpopular. It's going to, you know, you're not going to get that at incredibly low ownership. It is a bit expensive, but I don't really care. It's the best play of the night. So um, pencil me in for this game uh, being a pretty big Colorado dub. Yeah, so, you know, it's um, it's pretty easy to say, you know, play Colorado. I think a, an easy way to sort of just go all in on this, like, you know, the LA Kings are actually bad type narrative and not like, oh, the LA Kings stayed in the game with Minnesota and, you know, led Minnesota twice and then you know blew those leads. Of course, that's relevant. Um, but I think that the LA is going to have a really rough year. I think Colorado's, you know, they seem to be off and flying after their game one hiccup for St. Louis. So I think the puck line here, uh, you know, you get uh, plus 125 that Colorado wins by at least two. Now, of course, that means you can't go to overtime. You, you know, even if it's a one goal game, you have to get the empty netter. Um, but, you know, there's, you're still getting better than 50-50 proposition to do that. Uh, so I think that's, you know, a place where I'm looking to get a little bit more action than the minus 220 on the money line and just play the puck line. Uh, I, I feel really good about Colorado here. You know, so uh, any other thoughts before we sort of summarize some of our top bets of the night and then get into the DFS talk? Uh, now, let's, let's just get right into it. I mean, I don't really want to – it's kind of like I'm going to go into detail about L.A. and, and DFS, probably <laughs> not. I mean, it's it's so obvious if you wanted to play Kopitar, I have follower, Dowdy, they both – they all three of them saw an unbelievable amount of minutes, but they're just priced up too high for me to consider against Colorado, to be honest. So, yeah, let's just go a little bit of DFS thoughts. Uh, starting at center – 
the top echelon, it's seemingly pretty obvious that it's McKinnon. Hold on, um, hold on, dude. Hold on, dude. I was going to tell you uh, just to pick your top couple bets of the night. We'll do that before oh, we get we'll into do that now. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Yeah, I mean, I think my – I still uh, – Hold on, me. Uh, I think as far as the later games, because I kind of already have those up, I I still like the over in the Hurricanes and Predators game. I know you don't like it as much. It's a back to back. I just think that it's going to be. You're getting such good odds here uh, that it goes over, and I think that both these teams have a lot of offensive upside. I mean, the Predators maybe a little bit less, but I know that you're not a fan of it. The pace might not be there for you, but I think it's going to be kind of a sneaky spot. Five and a half in that game just doesn't seem right. Um, the other one is the capitals um to to win just the capitals win straight up i think that it's not quite enough for them um yeah um those are probably my top two yeah i'm gonna take i'm gonna take florida the money line like yeah you're paying a little bit but minus one seven uh minus 167 i'm looking at right now that line seems super uh you know super weak i think that one closes closer to minus 185 minus <laughs> minus 190 even so i think there's a lot of value there um, you know, Florida is just a class above Chicago. They've already shown it once. Um, I don't really see why there's this big difference in price between, you know, the Colorado money line and the Panthers myself, especially when the Panthers are you know playing at home. So that's just my, uh, I think that's my top bet. And then that Svechnikov line, if you do like the over in Carolina, Nashville, you know, Svechnikov over two and a half shots. I think that's the best uh, shot prop I've seen. And I love to bet those player props on shots, especially as you get more information. Yeah. I think those are much more beatable than, you know, uh, like actual game lines in the long run, just because, you know, unless you're out there trying to put thousands on a bet, you're you're not going to get blocked to, you know, put, you know, whatever, 50 bucks on a shot prop. And I think the books pay much less time, you know, worrying about that. So um, yeah. that'll definitely be something that we keep an eye on throughout the season here. So, and I know Chris yeah. says the same thing too, over on the Monday show or whenever he's talked about it, he sort of says the shot props too. So, uh, yeah, definitely those, those seem real juicy over there. I'm just kind of looking through them now, as, as I mentioned in New York, we don't have it yet for like actual legal, uh, consumption. Yep. So I'm a little bit, a little bit lower on that end. I'm, I'm trying to pick it up more and we're going to have it legal here soon. So are you ready for the daily fantasy or did you want to get to our question first? Uh, yeah, so we did have a question, uh, DJ. I, I have it up. Yep. yep. It was from Tyler. I'm definitely going to get your last name wrong. Bor Barasa. Um, is it ever a good idea to do a single game stack if you think it'll be high scoring, like four from one team or maybe two and three from another? Um, I guess I'll just get started with that. I'm a little bit more um, – I'll do it for sure. I'll definitely do it, but on a smaller slate, if you really like a game, I'm, I'm more – maybe into the idea. Uh, I definitely think it could work any night, but if it's a four game slate, I think if I really like one game over the other uh, three or four on the slate, I'm, I'm going to probably definitely jam in two and three, a big slate, 10 games. I don't really think it's great in GPP as far as like your odds of getting the perfect lineup. That's going to win the slate. Matt, I'll let you touch a little bit more on this though. Cause I'm pretty sure you've won a slate doing this exact narrative. So um I definitely want to get your take on it as a, you know, a person that jammed four Oilers in once and off and away you went. Um, yeah. I mean, that was more about the James Neal night than it was anything to do with, uh, you know, the actual game stacking of it. So um, yeah, I, I don't think that's necessarily related. So I've actually put a bit of thought to this. Um, I, I had the same question come up recently, just, you know, elsewhere for, you know, because this is all I talk about really. Um, and people know that. So I sort of feel like, um, you know, the way you got to look at it is not necessarily like in football where you have this obvious, if my stack hits, then the wide receiver on the opposing team gets like this automatic boost, their game environment. You know, in football, you can sort of extend the game by throwing basically because if it's incomplete, the clock stops, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, in hockey, that doesn't really exist in the same way. Um, so I think that it's, while it's, you know, an okay strategy, I think it's more about the game environment itself than it is saying, hey, I played this stack that makes this same stack or different stack in the same game a better, you know, a better play. Um, so I would be really careful where you do that. Um, you know, for example, I would not game stack Carolina Nashville on this slate, just because I don't think there'll be a ton of shots, you know, anything like that. Um, and I don't think that just goals alone make 
the other team more likely to score. Um, so that's sort of my like cautionary advice there. Now, I do think that when you, you know, get really into the nitty gritty, something like where you're stacking a team that you think is going to blow up another team and you need a value guy. One interesting angle is to sort of take a cheap defenseman from the other team that's going to rack up blocks. You know, if you think that, say, Vegas is going to hem a team in the zone and you play three Vegas guys and you need a cheap defenseman to cap out your lineup, that's the sort of situation where you think, well, they're going to take a ton of shots. Why don't I get a guy who could, you know, block three shots, get that seven points immediately, and then still has a little bit of, you know, added value. So that's the one place where I see it as like a little bit of, uh, you know, positive correlation more so than it is just related to good game environments. And I separate those two things in my head. So we can get into the slate specific talk though. Sure. Yeah. So we'll start at center quickly. We'll just try to do a few guys from each segment as far as, you know, guys over 6k and stuff like that. We're not going to go into great, great detail here because as I mentioned at center, it's kind of, are you playing McKinnon or not? Um, I think I'm going to have him as a core play tomorrow. Uh, I can also see Barkov getting into a lot of lineups because I really like this Florida side. As we mentioned, the rest of these guys, I'm not quite as high on. Um, you could definitely talk me into anyone. They're priced up that this high for a reason, but I haven't really seen it from anyone above 6K other than oh, Shifley was the other guy. Um, those are my top three for sure here. Uh, the minutes are there. The shots have been there. Everything you really want, power play one. I just, the rest of this, this I just don't really see a, a reason to be jamming in Crosby, honestly. Uh, you could do it if you really like that game a lot, but just too expensive. I think you can find value elsewhere and get a guy like McKinnon instead. Uh, Matt, what do you think here at the top? Uh, yeah, for me at the top, it's pretty simple. It's Nate McKinnon. You know, he's, if you can play him, great. Uh, he's the best center play. It's not very arguable. Um, and then I think if you can't get the McKinnon, but you want to spend up here, I think Evgeny Malkin at 6,700 is one of those guys who's sort of at a valley in terms of his price. I don't see Malkin getting any cheaper than this. Uh, as far as the rest of this top tier center, I, I just think they're all priced up. And I don't like playing guys who are priced up. I'm very price sensitive. Um, so unless it really correlates with some other guys, you know, I know there are some values at the wing position that we like. Unless your center sort of correlates with those wing values, I don't necessarily think any of these other, you know, centers are great plays on their own. Uh, so, you know, for me, it's McKinnon, the Malkin. But I think I'm going to live more on the cheaper end of things here. So um, yeah. just looking oh, – go, go ahead. No, I think we're in agreement. I'd rather spend up on McKinnon and go cheaper at center than try to get two guys in the high sixes and then – uh, I, I just think it makes way more sense because there's a lot of value on this slate. So yeah, getting below 6K, I'm really not that interested in anyone like four, five to six. Uh, just, I think Jack Hughes has a little bit of intrigue to me as far as he's been playing a huge role. And I think the talent's clearly there, uh, but just not a, sh- a big enough shot producer at this point for me to really want to sink my teeth into it. Um, but so, and this, this is kind of a dead range for me. I'm not sure if there's anyone here you wanted to mention above four or five on DraftKings. Um, yeah, I think I think Vinny Trocek is sort of back to his old ways. Um, you know, unfortunately, before he got hurt last year, we sort of got robbed of what I thought he would do really well in Carolina, which would be, you know, team up with a guy like Svechikov and shoot the puck a ton. Yeah. Um, it seems like he's playing on their top power play, which is great. And then it also seems like, you know, keep an eye on the Svechikov news, but we could get, you know, that sort of second line action going. Um, yeah. So I think he's, you know, uh, as you know, I think he's about as good a play for price per dollar as any of the upper tier centers. And I think he does have a decent bit of upside too. Um, but I think there's a lot of upside in these, you know, three to four K guys. Like I honestly might just play McKinnon, and you know, a cheap center. Uh, so just starting with Pierre-Luc Dubois yeah. I mean, playing against Detroit, we, we know the drill. Um, his minutes were slightly down. You talked about that a little bit, but I think he's, you know, if he's playing, he's, good to go. He's going to be locked and loaded as their line one power play one type guy. Um, and then I think, you know, there's a lot of pump plays that I'm interested in, including Norris and Stepan. If we get any sort of yeah. uh, certainty on their role, if we get Evan Rodriguez back yeah. on Cindy Crosby's wing, I mean, he's three K at center playing power play two. you know, if Kapanen doesn't play, I think he's going, almost certainly going to be in my lineup. So, uh, and then we have Morgan Frost, the, you know, the dead cat bounce, so to speak, uh, p- really popular across the industry on Monday night, centering their, you know, basically playing Couturier's role. 
uh, in the absence of Couturier and uh well, he did not. He saw, you know, very few minutes. I think he topped out at 12 and a half minutes. Uh, did play the power play one. They just didn't get more than one power play. Um, so that could be a really nice spot to go back to, especially if you're buying the Philly rebounds here. So any other thoughts sure. of center, dude, before you No, I, I, every one of my cheap guys, you said, for every yep. single one of them. So that was perfectly done. Um, again, now this is going to be where I might deviate from some people, but I'm really going to try to get Ovechkin and McKinnon in, in a couple of GPP lineups. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be completely doable. I think it is like we already mentioned a couple of really cheap guys and cheap stacks with Florida and Ottawa that are like cheap stacks that are also highly correlated and have huge upside. So I think it's definitely doable. He's I think the far and away clear guy up top. Um, you could definitely talk me into ranting him with McKinnon as well. It's going to be tough to get all three of those guys for sure. Um, Spechnikov, huge fan of what he does and I'm, I'm in on it. I think if you do like that Rangers first power play with Fox, you almost have to play Panarin. So, I, you know, a lot of time with the top wing, I definitely want to have it correlated. Unless it's Ovechkin, then sometimes I'll play him solo. But any of these guys are going to be a kind of a correlation piece other than Ovechkin. And I'm going to try my best to have a little bit of everything. Uh, I know, Matt, you're more of a guy that likes to do one lineup. Um, so is there one guy here that's going to really factor into your core? Um, yeah, I think Brady Kachuk. You know, not because he's necessarily a great value, but because you get correlation to him so cheaply um, mm-hmm. that if he has a good game, it's really easy to see yourself you know, put up that slate winning type score um, between guys like Batherson, uh, but, you know, Norris. And then even I think uh, Shabbat's a, a good play at 6,300. Um, there, there's not sort of, um, you know, this obvious glut of value like there was last week. I think the, you know, yeah. the sites are sort of figuring out how to price these guys appropriately for their roles. So I think he's sort of my top guy. As far as the, the mid-tier goes, um, you already touched on it, but with Oliver Bergstrand, I think he is far and away the best yeah. value on the slate um, just because he is a legitimate bonafide number one scorer in this league. He's going to, you know, he puts up shot numbers equivalent to just about the best players in the league. He's got the best matchup and he's way too cheap. So yeah. You know, that's that's for me the obvious play. I don't know if there's anyone else, though, that you wanted to mention before we just sort of talk about a couple punts and move the D. Oh, I, I, it's going to be obviously news dependent. You know, if we get any news on like Olafson signing up to line one with Eichel or, you know, something like that, then you might find me, you know, getting in on someone else. I think there is some decent value in Winnipeg as well on the other side. If, you know, line A is out, Ellers and Wheeler are still way too cheap, I think, for a top line role. And they just correlate with Shifley, who's getting 25 minutes a night. Uh, it's just, it's almost too good to be true. I still am not buying Ottawa being a great defensive team. They've looked good early. I mean, it definitely two game sample size. They've looked well. I'm still in on Winnipeg. I really like that game to be high scoring. So I don't mind again, like I, I'm not sure if I'm going to stack five in this game, but getting that top line for Winnipeg. I think it's still a mismatch against Ottawa, no matter who they put out against them. And it's just too cheap for me. So I really wanted to mention that stack. Other than that, I feel like there's some decently great punts, but I think we kind of mentioned them already, whether it be any of those Ottawa guys, um, any of those Florida guys, you could really talk yourself into anyone uh, we could get news that Skinner moves up to the first line in Buffalo. I doubt they change anything. Um, yeah, and then cap yeah. in at 3,100. I think we already, we mentioned he might be back. I can't imagine they pull Erod after he scored, but if they do and he ends up playing with Crosby, you might want to jam him in. Um, other than that, I think we probably got everyone and we can talk more in you know, the Discord if you want to get in on that. Um, yeah, so going to defense, uh, at the top we have Roman Yossi, John Carlson, uh, Yossi's running mate, Ryan Ellis. We have Drew Doughty, hilariously. Uh, Dougie Hamilton, Shabbat Latang, Kel McCarr. Um, I don't know about you, but I can count exactly two people on this list that Kel McCarr should probably be uh, less expensive than. Sure. Otherwise, yeah. it's kind of egregious that he is, you know, below a guy like Drew Doughty. Um, so not to say that, you know, Kel McCarr's a lock, but I think that yeah. if you're playing up at defense and you're not paying for, you know, a Roman Yossi or John Carlson, uh, you're kind of misguided if you don't take McCarr, honestly. Yeah. So I think in cash, I'm a little bit lower on McCarr, but in GPP, he has such a massive upside at 6K in this matchup that it's pretty egregious. I agree with that. I mean, I, he doesn't really have the same floor as every player because he isn't going to be a huge block guy. It, it could happen, but um, 
I'm just, yeah, I'm not focusing on that with GPP at all. So he's him and Shabbat, I think are the two that are probably the most interest in me here, but I like Makar more than Shabbat and I can't imagine playing both of them. So yeah, it's, it's Makar for sure. So yeah. That's a hundred percent agree. Yeah. And we already talked about Phil Peronik. Um, you know, he's yeah. just, he's going to come in. I think he's, uh, probably one of the best bets at 4k, you know, around that range to uh, play, you know, 26 minutes, uh, first power play time. So I really like him. I, I think that he will end up making my you know game day roster, so to speak. Um, sure. So, you know, any, any interest in punting the, the D position um, with so much value at center and wing to me, yeah. it seems kind of thin, but uh, you know, anyone that you like, no one that I'm, I want to, you know, tout and stick my teeth in on. Uh, I think that this 4K range is pretty solid overall, and you could talk yourself into a few. I mean, I already mentioned Fox. I definitely like him a lot as a player in general. I'm, I haven't – don't think – correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't seen a massive floor on this guy. He does block the puck a decent bit. You know, you, you could get a shots and a blocks bonus out of him. You, you definitely could reach that value, but it's going to be tough to pay 5200 if you're not stacking with him. So – as far as, you know, building a, a cash lineup or a lineup that's kind of spread out between teams, he's not going to probably make your final cut. Hironic, I think, is the guy here for sure. The rest of it, you know, you're probably going to want to stack. If you play um, Pierre-Luc Dubois, Seth Jones might make it in. I mean, he just came off of a six-shot on cold game, 27 minutes. So I think if you like that game to be close, he could be, you know, the guy that gets a million minutes. And 4,900, I don't ever hate that idea. Um He's definitely a guy that I I think is going to be too cheap for a lot of this year. Um, so, yeah, that's probably it uh, defense, unless there's anything else you want to mention. Yeah, I mean, Seth Jones had one of the worst penalty uh, shot attempts. Uh, first one of the year, actually, <laughs> and it was just awful. So, uh, Great. you know, he uh, well, <laughs> he still managed six shootouts. shots. But How much game, is the shootout goal? Uh, I mean, it was, it was a penalty like, shot. No, I know. I, I'm just uh, saying. Just I think it's like 1.2 1. 1. maybe. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, goalies – I, I don't know what to say about goalies. Um, you know, we've already talked about the betting lines. I think that you should correlate a lot of your goalie selections based on those betting lines, yeah, and the, right. you know, the correlations in your lineup. Um, so with that in mind, I think that it's, uh, you know, I think that whoever starts for Ottawa, almost certainly Matt Murray, I think that they're a really good bet to see mm -hmm. uh, the shots bonus or the saves bonus, I guess. Um, and they are a middling sap, you know, a middling type salary, which is in line with their pick of odds. So if I'm correlating Ottawa around it, I think that Matt Murray and that's my favorite guy here. Yeah, I, I could definitely see that. I mean, I, like I said, I kind of like the Winnipeg side a bit. Um, I don't hate the idea, but not my, not where I'm probably going to end up. Uh, hmm. I, I don't know. I could, I mean, I could talk myself into Blackwood. I, if he starts, he's awesome. Um, I do like the Rangers okay, but I think they'll put a lot of shots on him. So, I mean, the way I look at goalie is which goalie is going to see enough shots and do I like them to win? That's kind of where I'm, you know, my normally just go with it. I think if we get a minimum salary, Jonas Johansson, I might consider a couple flyers on him being so incredibly cheap. It's going to open you up to a lot of different uh, lineup options. Other than that, no one I'm really, really high on here uh, that I want to tout. I like Sam Sonoff if he starts against Pittsburgh because I think they get the win. As I mentioned, it's one of my favorite bets. So 7,400, I guess I'll, I'll put myself at my, my name on him. Put the DJ. All right, cool. Um, you know, opening up a ton of money with uh, Johan or yeah, Johansson and Nett. Uh, what's your favorite stack of the night? We'll do a, a, our top stack and then we'll uh, get on out of here. Okay. I, I feel like saying Colorado is cheap, so I'm, I'm not going to do it. Uh, I'm actually going to go with Winnipeg. I think I talked myself into it. They were not a complete dud on Monday night, but did not get, definitely didn't get you there. If you stacked them up against Toronto, I think that, it, you know, people might have some recency bias in a back-to-back. -back. I still love it. They're going to see a ton of run against Ottawa. I mean, why are you going to look away from that? So Shifley, Ellers, Wheeler, if line A steps back in, then we'll replace him with Ellers and you're good to go. Yeah, um, I think I will go with the uh, the Columbus stack of Pierre-Luc Dubois, Olivi Bjorkstrand, and Seth Jones. You mentioned already, DJ. I mean, those guys, they should all correlate on the power play. Um, we I think we'll also see Mikhail Gregorenko as their even-strength line mate and their power play running mate, but uh, definitely check in with warm-ups because the lines did get a bit jumbly during the mm -hmm. Monday game, so uh, just – you know, double check that if you're stacking Columbus, but there's no excuse for them being this cheap. 
Uh, so I think they let you fit in a lot of good players around them. And obviously they have a ton of merit on their own as well. So yeah. uh, anything else you want to say before we uh, get on out of here and get ready to watch these eight games on Tuesday? No, I just hope everyone's having a good season. I, I do want to just, I guess, mention that we have had some pretty big winners as far as listeners to this show and the Morning Skate podcast. Uh, so Jimmy, shout out to him. Uh, I know there's others. I'm not sure if you have anyone else in mind, but you know, definitely love seeing those screen grabs. So definitely send them to us. Send them on. If you don't want it to be public, you don't have to obviously do it, but you can you know, DM us separately or put them on Twitter and we'll retweet them all. So congratulations to anyone that's hit it big. I know I'm kind of waiting it out right now to get my big hit. I have had a couple of close, closest calls. Um, so please continue to win money. Use us and any avenue. We're always reachable on Twitter at DJ underscore Mitchell nine four at fake moods. The discord has grown a lot. We've got a lot of good conversation going in there. If you are like me and you don't like to miss any of the news before lock, get in there. We're talking, we're going over everything. We have a, you know, a hundred eyes on the, on the feed. So Anything else you want to mention before we get out of here? Uh, no, I mean, just uh, if you don't remember, because you have a goldfish brain like me, uh, Pat Mayo is giving away 100 bucks for the listeners. Uh, you know, so if you want to be entered for that, just be sure to rate, review, and uh, comment on YouTube. And uh, hopefully you can be uh, the last lucky winner to be pulled later this week. So uh, with all that said, thank you for listening. And uh, we'll talk soon.